I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we're going back to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to talk about execute many, which is a, a method that you can use to parameterize one SQL string and then execute many, uh, many times using a whole bunch of uh, parameters, uh, parameters in a list uh, or parameters in tuples. Uh, and this makes it very, very handy for you to insert a whole bunch of different statements from a bunch of lists that you have. And so without further ado, let's get to our execute many on Snowflake with Python. Interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching or just cool behind the scenes stuff and other cool stuff that I uh, like to put up, make sure to check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Okay, so to get started here, I'm using uh, the idle shell uh, from a default installation of Python from python.org. And uh, I've added some other goodies like the uh, Snowflake connector for Python. Uh, which you should install in order to do this. Uh, I did this in an earlier episode. Uh, make sure that you get the version with the uh, pandas and square brackets at the end of it so that you can uh, just return uh, Snowflake data directly into pandas and you don't have to uh, mess around. Uh, so to get started, I'm going to uh, import the connector and I'm going to uh, import pandas. And uh, I'll give some feedback just saying that we're going to open open up here our connection and uh, um, and I'm also going to set the parameter style um, and we're, we're going to use one uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate both parameter styles we'll start with the uh, question mark style um, the other um, style is called the numeric style and uh, <clears throat> both are very handy uh, the numeric one is probably good uh, if you have a lot of parameters then um, having a numbered uh, set of parameters is quite useful. And then I'll open my uh, connection saying uh, snowflake.connector.connect and I just pasted in a string uh, for uh, my uh, installation there. And it's good to make sure that you put your warehouse and your database and schema in your connection. Um, some people don't like to do that if you have to sort of traverse or use different databases uh, in your script, but uh, most of the time I find that I work in one database and uh, and so it's nice to just put it into the connection and then it makes things a bit simpler. So I'll give some feedback saying uh, preparing statements there and then I'm going to uh, uh, make my insert statement and this is going to be a parameterized insert statement which is sort of like the proper way to uh, to insert into a database so that you are not subject to SQL injection attacks um, uh, like if you use um, dynamic SQL where you're sort of building it from from scratch and sort of in putting the values in as you build the string. Um, this is going to allow us to have some parameters there and, uh, and as you can see we're using the question mark um, so there's a the question mark <clears throat> And you'll notice that that corresponds to the option that we chose at the top there for Q mark. And so uh, now I've got an insert statement into my project tasks table that's in my database there. And then I'll make my uh, per parameters variable here. And I'm going to make a list of lists for, for this uh, uh, demonstration. However, you can also use um, tuples for this, uh, which would basically be doing the same thing except you'll be you would be using the uh, the round brackets instead of the square brackets so I'm going to insert several items here I'm going to you know my first field is the task ID which is a integer so I'll put 101 in there um, and then suggestion and more more cookies and team meetings everybody needs more cookies and uh, and then 102 I'll I'll make that an action item. Uh, you know, Mary's going to set up the cloud drives for our project. And uh, oh, I missed a, I missed a comma there. Got to put a comma in between your list items. And um, then I'll add one more just for, just to demonstrate how this is done. So uh, 103, 
um, you know, I'll make this one a status and then we'll say the project's up to date or something. Um, so uh, ahead of schedule and and uh, ahead of status, uh, good enough. And uh, then we can uh, uh, we can end this by putting our uh, sort of like the uh, the end of our list of lists uh, with the square bracket, and then we can move on. And then uh, we can create a cursor for this example. Uh, the cursor is going to be very handy, so we'll we'll create a cursor and we'll call it CS and then I'll just uh, give some feedback to the user here saying uh, ex executing uh, so we'll execute our SQL which is parameterized with many uh, many values so then we can use the cs.execute many and we can just uh, put our SQL in and the parameters as our arguments and that makes it nice and handy for when we would like to um, you know, make many inserts. Um, I'll go ahead and close that. Um, close that connection. It's good to make sure you close it. And uh, but maybe before I do, may, yeah, maybe before I do that, I'll grab a, a data frame just so that we can see what we did. Um, so um, this is where our pandas data frame comes back to us. It's kind of handy. And uh, make sure you install the right version. Like I said at the beginning of this video. It's like pip install uh, snowflake connector python square brackets pandas on the end of that because that's going to give you this uh, this ability to uh, to use um, the pandas fetch all and so the uh, first thing we'll do after we've got that we'll just do a cs dot execute uh, using our cursor to to uh, get those uh, values and then we'll we'll uh, use the fetch pandas all uh, to get our um, data frame so uh, the data frame is a pandas data frame which is really nice and as I mentioned uh, make sure that you have the right uh, version of the connector installed to use that and I think I think there's only a few records in there so I don't need to print the head or tail I'll just print the whole data frame and then I'll close it uh, close the connection and we can uh, see what happens when we uh, when we hit go from there I'll add a feedback on there just saying done and then uh, check it over for errors here I think it looks pretty good um, then we can hit F5 and uh, we can see what we get if we get any errors or or, or what from there so um, looks like it's starting up it opens goes into snowflake prepares statements and executes them and there's our result table uh, which we've uh, retrieved from our Snowflake database and, uh, and you can see that uh, uh, those got inserted nicely uh, and uh, that's exactly what we wanted to see. We could also check out the uh, numeric style of parameters uh, which is a little bit different and like I said it could be handy ca in cases where you've got a whole ton of parameters and you want to index them as opposed to looking at question marks and trying to figure out where things are, um, you can sort of number them and, and uh, uh, you can do that by changing the parameter style to numeric and then putting the parameters in as you see here with a colon and, the, and then the parameter number. And so uh, I'll insert those into our table. I'll change, I'll put the same rows in but I'll change the ID uh, so that the ID remains there and uh, so now it'll be the same rows except they have a 200 uh, level ID there uh, task ID and as you can see I'm using the numeric um, parameter style and there's my one two and three uh, for my parameters and uh, and that should be just fine that'll work the same way when I hit F5 and as you can see it's preparing statements and there we go uh, we've got our next three rows inserted into our our uh, uh, snowflake database and we've used the alternate style of parameters and that's how you use execute many on snowflake hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use execute many on snowflake using python if you like what you saw today please give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel click the bell when you see the bell and put any questions or comments you might have in the comment section below have a great day have a safe day and i'll catch you next time